Okay, everybody, we're picking up on the chapter nine handout from our last class that had the group problem on the front. And it, we're going to the page where it says properly account for the disposal of property, plant, and equipment. So this is the important thing to remember or highlight on your notes that a lot of times when we dispose of assets, they have not yet been depreciated fully to that date. And so what you have to do is take the rest of the depreciation up until that date. And then you can result, then you can check the book value versus what you're receiving to determine whether or not you have a gain or a loss. So let's take a look at example one and I'll walk you through it. Take about 30 seconds to read it. Okay, so it says it owns machinery that cost 20,000 when purchased in 2021. They've been recording depreciation at a rate of 2,400 per year. And they'd like us to prepare journal entries to update depreciation and record the sale. So the depreciation entry is pretty straightforward. Cap blocks on. depreciation expense and accumulated depreciation for our machinery. Now the question is how much? So annual equals 2,400. We have eight months here. And so we're going to divide by 12. So we have 2,400 times 8 divided by 12. And that gives you depreciation expense of 1,600. So now keep in mind our new accumulated depreciation total should be 10,000 even. Any questions there? Just working on the back of the stand out. This is the new one when we get there. Okay, so now I like to look at it and say, okay, what do we get? So we did receive cash. I think it's about it. 10,500, we know we have to take the accumulated depreciation for the machine off the books, which is 10,000. And then I always leave that one open because I'm not sure if it's gonna be a gain or a loss yet. And then I have machinery of 20,000. Now, so how do I calculate it? What did we receive? 10,500 cash minus the book value. 
which is 20,000 cost minus 10,000 accumulated depreciation. And so that equals a $500 gain. And so the gain of 500, and that would be an on sale of machinery. Any questions there? Okay, hey, why don't you guys try the next entry? And by that, I mean part B because part A is gonna be the same. Okay, let's go ahead and walk through this one. All right, so what did we receive? 5,200 in cash, less the book value, which is still gonna be the same, 5,200 minus 10,000. And so that equals minus 4,800. And so that is a loss. So what did we get? We got cash, 5,200. We have to eliminate the accumulated depreciation for machinery for 10,000. We're also gonna debit loss on sale of machine or disposal of machine, 4,800. And then we have a credit to machinery.
over 20,000. Any questions on that handout or the group problem? Okay, so we have a extra class um, to cover some things in chapter nine. And so I wanted to throw out some things. I like the way the class went yesterday. I liked you guys working together and asking me questions. So I created some additional type problems. These are a little more comprehensive. So I'll help kind of walk you through some of them, but at least with like this first one, you can kind of say, okay, what's gonna be part of my cost? What's not gonna be part of my cost? So for this one, we're looking at the total cost of the two pieces of equipment. If an item is not capitalized as a cost, indicate should, how it should be reported. So. If it's not gonna be capitalized, then it's going to be an expense of some sort. So take about five minutes and I'll see where you're at to just look through this purchased asset and kind of label it to yourself, whether or not you think it should be capitalized or you think it should be expensed. And then I'll walk you through it. Now you might want to take your, uh, staple out of your handout because the way I set it up is kind of it has the answer on the back page. Sure can. Got to make a little money on the side so this will be ten dollars. <laughs> I said I've got to make a little money on the side so that'll be ten dollars. Yeah. Paper is expensive. So again, I'm not asking you to do the problem. I'll walk you through that part, but I want you to kind of gauge for yourself, be engaged and say, you know, do I, do I know where these things go? You can give this back to me in the end so like, like you can use it so you don't have to keep flipping pages. You guys can share this one so that you don't have to keep flipping pages back and forth if you'd like. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the one that we're going to purchase. Now, these are in no particular order. Um, the answer puts them in a particular order, but I would go just by, you know, top to bottom on a question on your homework software. I don't know if it would require it to be in any particular order, but I'm just going to go top to bottom. So cost to hire technicians to test the equipment. So assuming the equipment needs to be tested, 
before it's put in place, then that actually is something that we would capitalize. And so that's 10,000. And then it says cash paid for equipment, excuse me, including sales tax of 31,000. So that is the cost of the unit plus sales tax, which we can't avoid paying. So that is all included here. And that's 522,500. Freight and insurance while in transit. So that is coming to us. And so we're responsible for those costs if we agree to pay them and they should be capitalized because it's necessary. And I think that was 7,000. Cost of moving equipment into place in the factory. So in general, we would assume something like this because it's happening beforehand is necessary. And it doesn't say that, you know, they made a mistake or this is some inefficiency. So this is just normal parts, things that we would need to do to get it ready. And so that's 2,850 capitalized. Special electronic electrical wiring required for the new equipment. So this is special, but it is required for the new equipment. So this is going to be included as well. So that's 3,200. And then repair costs incurred in the first year of operations related to this equipment. So any repair costs going forward that don't extend the life, make the production quality better, just get expensed. And the insurance premium paid during the first year of operation gets expensed as well. So our total costs capitalized is gonna be 545,550. Okay, let's take a minute and look at the construction one. Okay, so let's go ahead and start looking at these. Cost of installing the equipment. So that's pretty straightforward, right? We need that. So that's 6,500. Material and purchased parts, gross cost, 100,000 failed to take the 2% discount. So here, we are going to capitalize part of it because we did need material and parts, but since it's only the cash equivalent amount, we're gonna put 98,000 in there.
that $2,000 would end up as some sort of purchase discounts not taken or something like that. Labor costs, assume that it's to for the construction, so that's part of it, 76,700. So that's included. Allocation of overhead costs, fixed and variable. You are allowed to allocate some of your overhead costs while you're working on the building. And so this is 28,000. Imputed interest on funds using during construction for stock financing. So this one is going to be expensed. Actually, the stock financing reduces the amount that you get on the stocks, so it doesn't get expensed, excuse me. And then profit on self-construction there is no entry for that because you don't have a profit on it until you've sold it. And presumably you won't until you do. So the costs to be capitalized here are 209200 Any questions on those two? Okay, let's take a look at example number two. Okay, so we'll kind of take each one of these. And basically what we want to do is look and see if we can correct the entries. And so we know the entries are wrong. I'm not trying to fool you. It acquired land, buildings, and equipment from a bankrupt company for a lump sum price of 700000 At the time of the purchase, the assets had the following book and appraised values. So do we care so much about what somebody else had in the book, in their books? No, we don't care at all. We care about the appraised values. And so that total I wanna record and that's 800,000. And we know that we have to record an entry that is based on what we paid and how we spread it out is based on the percentage of its appraised values. So we need to take the percentage of land and the percentage of the total and divide it to get that percentage. So we have 300 divided by 800,000, 300,000, excuse me. And that's 37.5%. $250,000 divided by $800,000 is going to be 31.25% which is also going to be 31.25%. So now since we paid the 700,000, we're going to multiply that out times this each 
percentage, 37.5, 31.25, to get our entry. And so I'm just gonna copy this because the heading, or at least the entry type appears to be correct here. I'm not going to I'm not going to paste anything with it. Sometimes word has the last rule. We know we paid 700,000 in cash. And now we're going to take the land. And we have 700,000. And we're going to multiply it by its percentage. Three hundred or thirty-seven point five percent. And that equals two hundred and sixty two thousand five hundred. Now the remaining two were equal. But they're going to be calculated the same thing, seven hundred thousand times thirty one point two five percent. And so that's two hundred and eighteen thousand seven hundred and fifty. Any questions there? Now we're going back to look at number two. And I would like you to try number two, see if you can correct it. And I understand if you want to keep kind of a clean page down here, you can hopefully there's enough room to kind of make notes here. If you have any questions, just wave your hand. I'll come running over. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the second one. And when we're looking at it, where do we think the error occurred? So you're partially correct, right? The, the uh, interest payable um, has a percentage, right? but it doesn't factor into our cost, right? 
we look at the present value and we don't calculate that other present value because we have a, a percentage of interest. If this were zero, then we'd have to back into it and calculate that, but we don't have to. We know what the present value of it is. So we're gonna have some sort of equipment here. And I'll leave that blank for the time being because I wanna talk about, okay, this is what we got. What did we give up? We gave up cash of 10,000. And we also signed a note payable for 40,000. And now, unless that interest rate percentage is exorbitant or unrealistically low, then we don't have to impute an interest rate on it. We assume that it's at fair value. So here we're at $50,000 the cost of our equipment, any interest payable that would accrue for the life of the asset would be expensed kind of as part of interest due to operations. Okay. Any questions on that one? Let's take a look at number three. What they're trying to get at with number three is that you should be recording things at the net kind of cash value related to it. So this purchase discounts should not gross up the cost of your equipment here. So what you should have for number three is it should be office equipment. at 49,500 and I think it's accounts payable that they borrow. $49,500 and all they did was just take the 1% discount that it should have been reported at. Okay, take a minute, just kind of walk through your head, what will you would get here? Oh, it looks like I cut that last one off. Did I have it printed on yours properly? I don't think so. Oh, I did, on mine. I don't have a copy, did I get? Yours looks like that, okay. So let's just put what it says here. Somehow it deleted the stuff that was before it. Usually I have to do a special kind of drinking to make that mistake. But for some reason, this is warehouse. This is the entry that they made. 900,000. Man, I'm all kinds of. And so that was a debit. Then they were credit to cash. Or 750,000. Sometimes it gets finicky. And so this would be a credit profit on construction for 150,000. So that was the original entry that was there. That entry is incorrect.
say they should have not reported any it's not right either hold on one second i'm sorry Okay, so number four says no entry made. I had parts of number four and number five, which you don't have on yours. So should they have made an entry? They receive land at zero cost from the village of Wellington as an inducement to locate the business there. The praise value of the land is 120,000 and they didn't record the land because it has no cost basis. So they would have land at no cost basis, which is incorrect. It should be 120,000. And when you donate something to a corporation, they would have some sort of contribution revenue of 120,000. Sorry about my confusion there. Any questions on example four? Okay, let's take a look at example three. Okay, so we want to look and say, what amount should Navarone report as capitalized interest? So we have signed a fixed price contract to have Homer Construction make a plant facility at a cost of $8 million. It was estimated that it would take two years to complete the project, also in January 1, 2025, to finance the construction costs. It borrowed $8 million payable in eight annual installments of $1 million plus interest at a rate of 8%. During 2025, they made deposit and progress payments totaling 3 million under the contract. The weighted average amount of the accumulative expenditures was 1.2 million for the year. So our weighted average accumulated expenditures equals 1.2 million. That Excess borrowed funds were invested in short-term securities for which Navarone realized investment income of 175000 So this one's pretty straightforward. You borrowed one, or you had $8 million available. You used $1.2 million as the weighted average in payments. And so we multiply that by 8%, which is the cost for the specific borrowing for the project and so we end up getting 96,000. Now, remember that when we have our weighted average accumulated interest, we have to look and say, what was our actual interest? So assuming they borrowed $8 million and they had it payable in eight annual installments of $1 million, so they wouldn't have paid anything on January 1. They would have had interest for the full year and it would be 8% of 800000 or $8 million, excuse me. 
And so quick math. is 640,000, that would be their actual interest. And so you always use the lesser of your actual interest or the specific interest charge. So this 96,000 is the lesser of the actual interest charged. Okay, and then just as a note, the interest earned, is not offset against the interest expense. So now we have situation number two. This is during 2025, Hollybox or Holy Box Corporation constructed and manufactured certain assets and incurred the following interest costs in connection with those activities. So we have interest costs incurred, factory constructed for Hollybox's own use, 41,000. Inventories routinely manufactured and produced on a repetitive basis, 7,800. And a special order machine for sale unrelated to customer produced according to customer specifications. And then it says all of these required an extended period for completion. Assuming the effect of interest capitalization is material, what is the total amount of interest costs to be capitalized? So this one is pretty straightforward here. The factory constructed for Hollybox's own use is included. Inventory is routinely manufactured on a, and produced on a repetitive basis are excluded. Special order machine for sale to an unrelated customer produced according to customer specifications is included. So we have 41,000 plus 3,500 and that equals 44,500. And remember, this is already telling us they've already done the weighted average expenditures, and then multiplied it out by the interest rate and given us the lower of the two there. Last one asks, how much should be shown as capitalized interest on the financial statements? So take a read through number three. So Okay, so we have to look and say, okay, what are the weighted average expenditures for the year? And we have 1.5 million. And it says that it's evenly accounted for during the year. And that means if we were to divide this by 12, it 
it would be a hundred and twenty five thousand per month. And so I'm going to do just some quick math to show you this. Look at that. All right, so this was outstanding 12 months out of 12. Know if it said it were made at the end or doesn't really say whether or not they made it through the end or not. So I may have to adjust this to 11 and zero. We'll see. Doesn't like either of those. I'm not able to come up with the exact amount, but I'll show you how they did it. So what they did is they said, when expenditures are evenly spread throughout the period, then take the total and divide by two. So we have 1.5 million and we're gonna divide it by two. And so we get 750,000. weighted average expenditures. So we need to take that 750,000 weighted average expenditures, and we have to look at what it is they had for specific construction. And so in this case, they had a $5 million loan at 10%. So we multiply this one by 10%, and we end up with 75,000 specific interest or project. And now we have to calculate what was our actual interest. And the actual interest was 5 million that we borrowed times 10%, which is 500,000. And so 75,000 is less than the 500,000. So we use 75,000 to capitalize. And then of course the interest earned Of 120,000 is irrelevant. Two L's or one. One.
what I was trying to do here was come up with the way that they got the to the 750,000 and I'm not sure I can get there. So use their formula. It's much easier. Any questions? Okay, let's look at example four. And I've kind of moved this up. And so we're gonna do the table after we figure out what it is that we paid. So I'd like you to come up with your cost for the equipment and just calculate that. Give you about five minutes for it. You guys can obviously talk and work together. This is not a test or anything like that. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, you need to calculate for right now what the cost of the asset would be that would go in the upper right hand corner of the table. So that's all you're doing. You're not doing the table yet. I'm gonna walk you through the first part of the table once we get that number. And then I don't know how well you can see this, but I put the present value of an annuity up there. Okay, so this should be a pretty quick calculation for you. You look at the number of periods. Was our number of periods? Excellent. And our interest rate? 8%. So we scroll over and we get 3.99271. And so our annuity... equals 100,000 and we're going to multiply it by 3.99271 and so our balance as of the beginning when we took out the loan is 399.271 now we're going to make a note payment of 100,000 but we have to calculate 8% interest. And so that's 399.271 times 0 0.08. 
and that's going to equal 31, and we'll call it 942. So for us, that is going to be our interest, and it's also going to help us reduce our discount on that note that we offered. And our principal, 100,000 minus 31,942 equals 68,058. And so this balance, 399,271 minus 68,058 equals 331213. And so what I'd like you to do is finish this chart. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Give you about five minutes to finish that. Temporarily pause the sharing. Just want to see what it does.
I'm just walking by. If you have any questions, let me know. Not checking for accuracy, just seeing where you're at. Okay, so it looks like there's about another, you guys need about another minute. So do that and then we'll hop to it. Okay, so this is just the bottom part of that table, and I'm just using this because it's easier for me to work the numbers here. So hopefully for 2026, you got something in the neighborhood of that. So that looks pretty good for me. Any questions? Oh, I love Excel. So useful. Okay, so now let's go on to the questions. The reason that I wanted that there, because I think once you do this, that's kind of the hard part. Picking up the entries from there are fairly easy. And so the first entry to ask for is, okay, what happened on the date of purchase? And so you bought equipment. And you had a ten hundred thousand dollar note payable, and you multiplied it by the present value factor annuity. I'm sorry, and the present value factor was three point nine nine two seven one or seven yeah two seven one. And so the value for our equipment is going to be three hundred and ninety nine thousand two hundred and seventy one. You took out a note payable of 500,000. And so the difference is going to be the discount on note payable. And it's 100,729.
Any questions there? Okay, now we're moving to part B. And part B says to record the entry, the adjusting entry at the end of the year. And so even though we didn't have interest expense, the discount gives us the ability to do that because we had to impute a rate. And so our interest expense, we can take directly off the chart, which is our 31,942. And then we have the note payable payment, and that's 100,000. And we, are, of course, are giving up cash, and that's $100,000. And we have to adjust the discount. for the interest amount 31,942. Now the entry for part C is gonna be similar. So I'll give you a minute to draw in your heading there. The amounts are not gonna be the same, but you know what they are. All we have to do is fill in the interest expense and the discount, which we've already calculated. I'm just going to go 26,497 there. Now, part D says, assuming that the equipment had a 10-year life and no salvage value, prepare the journal entry necessary to record depreciation. So we have 399,271 minus a zero salvage value. And we're going to divide that by, it's 10 years, it's a useful life. Yep. And so that's going to be 39,927 per year. And so we're going to record depreciation expense. 39,927 and accumulated depreciation for equipment. Not making everything a truck today. 39,927. So we've only got five minutes left in class. I got through a good number of these. There is one more there if you want to practice it. Um, and if you have questions, I'll answer them on Tuesday, but otherwise we'll be starting on chapter 10. And if you just want the answer, send me an email and I'll post the answer for you. You guys are free to go. Have a great weekend. Come back safe and sound on Tuesday. I'll see you then. Thank you for those who are watching the streams.